Hello YouTube, welcome to Dirty Tones Tutorials Episode 1. This is my first episode and I, I decided that I want to try to make some tutorial videos showing how to use open source software to uh, make different multimedia projects. And we're going to start with music and um, I love open source and um, sometimes you have to deal with some crashing and things like that but for, it's free and um, most of the time sometimes it's not free but I just like the community aspect of it and I think that it's very powerful. It's so much more powerful than uh, proprietary software. So at any rate, that's enough of my rambling. Let's get started. Um, I'm going to show first, I'm going to show a software called LMMS and that's for Linux Multimedia Studio. And you can pick this up for Windows or for Linux at lmms.sourceforge.net. I have seen reports of people using this on Mac but I don't know how to get that running and um, so for now I'm just saying it's for uh, Linux and Windows. Um, so let's, let's have a look at what this program looks like and let's go over here. Um, when you open up the software you'll see there's a four different windows that open up and it's the song editor and the beat baseline editor, the mixer and the control rack. It's a little bit different than FL Studio or Fruity Loops if you're old like me but um, it's very similar too and it, it's a sequencer and it has a lot of the same features and it's free actually it doesn't cost anything but uh, I would encourage you if you enjoy the software to donate and that will help um, add features and keep the project alive so first thing I want to talk about let's go into some basic music theory and um, and then you'll understand more about how this works and why it works um, the first thing we're going to talk about in music is songs or the speed of a song is, is denoted by tempo or beats per minute and that is right here in the LMMS window and you can click there and drag down to lower the tempo or back up. To, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this at 120 beats per minute and that is basically twice as fast as a second so there are 120 beats in a minute or that's the tempo of the song. Um, think of the national anthem and you're pretty close to 120 beats per minute. The next thing you have here is the time signature and this 4-4 four, four time signature is what's also known as common time and 4-4 four, four is just means that there are four beats per measure. Uh, a measure is basically um, a segment of music and it's also called a bar some people call it a bar, some people call it a measure, but there are four beats in every bar or measure. Also the bottom number here is basically what equals a beat and if it's a four then a quarter note would be one beat. One beat would e equal a quarter note. If I put this on eight for example then um, one beat would, one, one eighth note would equal one beat. Um, if I move this to two then this is cut time and this basically means that instead of a quarter note this is this is a quarter note right here and a quarter note would be every beat would be a quarter note if I move this to two that means every um, every um, half note is now a quarter note so that is um, cut time and that would be twice as fast so I'm gonna go ahead and move this back to four four the top note is how, again how many how many beats are in a measure if I move this to three that's three four time um, that would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If I put it back up to four, four, it'd be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, I found this great website here that has uh, musical notation, and it does a really good job um, explaining every aspect of musical notation here. And it's called MethodBehindTheMusic.com. Um, check that out. But um, let's go ahead and look at um, musical notation. Um, the first thing I want to look at is a whole note. Now a whole note in 4-4 time signature would just be that the whole note, if you played a whole note, it would last four beats um, and that would be a full measure, uh, but it would be last four beats. The next thing is you have is half notes and it basically divides this in half. So now a half note would then be two beats. If you were playing a half note you would play it, you would hold that note for two beats or two counts in a measure. And then next you divide that again and you have quarter notes and this would be held for one beat 
and there could be a total of four of these in one measure. So it would be one, two, three, four, just like that. You divide that again, and you got eighth notes. And an eighth note is half of this, so it lasts one half of a beat in 4-4 four, four times signature. So that's how you get on the upbeat. This would be the upbeat, so like 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Um, and then you have divided half again, you got 16th notes. 16th notes basically are, you still have 1, 2, 3, 4, but it would be 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 and a 4 e and a. And that's kind of how that's broke down. Um, notice that a eighth note has a little flag. If you were going to have multiple eighth notes in a row, such as one and two and three and four and one and two, and um, you wouldn't want to draw all these little flags. So you could just connect them with one bar and do as many of those in a row as you want, and you save yourself a little time. And that's how that's denoted most of the time in music. Sixteenth uh, notes are the same. You notice they have two flags, and you can connect them together with a double bar at the top. You might be asking yourself, well, it goes, if you divide everything in half, um, what if you want to play something that's held out for three counts instead of, um, instead of two or four? Well, that's where dotted notes come in. And a dotted note, the dot just takes whatever it's after, it, takes, it adds half of the time to it. Um, so that would, a half note would be two counts plus another count, so another um, beat because it's dotted, so it would be three. Another way to do it is with a tie. You could, write, you could write a half note and a quarter note and tie them together, and that's the same thing as a dotted half note. So that's just, the, the last thing I want to talk about is rest. Um, in rhythm, there is no rhythm or music without rest, and a rest is basically the same thing as a note except for the opposite, and uh, there's also notation for that too. So a ha this is a whole note and a whole rest. Um, I remember the whole rest because it looks like, if you imagine this is a ground plane, it's coming down from the line, and it looks like there's a hole being dug in it. So that would last, that would be a rest, nothing would be played for four counts. Next you have the half note, and its equivalent of rest would be a half rest, and it goes up from the line kind of like a hat, and that's just how I remember it from school, it's kind of dumb, but that's how that looks. And then a quarter note. And it's got the little squiggly thing here, so you can remember that. But this is a quarter rest, and it's a quarter note. They're both equal to one count. Next down, you have the eighth note, or the eighth rest. And there are half of a count. And then this is a quarter of a beat, and this would be a uh, sixteenth note. And so this would, uh, you notice there's two flags, and you can see the little two things there. So that, that's kind of how that's done. So now let's jump back to LMMS and let's see how we can make these notes in a LMMS. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I've got a beat and bass line editor. That's all we're going to work on today. I'm going to delete this default preset, remove this track, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a snare drum. Okay. So now we have a snare drum and these here are switches. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Here are switches that turns it on and off. By default, everything's on a rest. So if I push play, nothing happens because there's no notes being played. Um, if I go ahead and put right there on the first and hit play, it's going to hit one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. It hits on one every time it comes through. It just basically hits this on loop. This is one measure or one bar, so there's four beats in this. So if I then go and put one here, cut it in half, it's going to be snare, two, snare, two, like this. And it just repeats. If I put it here, 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 and here, this is quarter notes. Now quarter notes, like I said, would be every time it would be on the beat. So there's four of these per measure. And it would just be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. If I divide that in half and do this, this makes us eighth notes. So now this is going to be one and two and three and four and. And it just repeats. If I put it on every one of these, this would be sixteenth notes. And this would be the one yenna, two yenna, three yenna, four yenna. 
sound. Okay, and that's how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all notes. And let's see, I think I have a little bit of time left. Let's just go ahead and build a basic drum beat to show you exactly how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and add, um, let's just add a kick. That's a good one. Just a kick. We have a kick and a snare. Let's just do a closed hi hat. And that's all we need for now. So, I, and but by the way, I'm just selecting all my sounds over here. These are my samples, and I'm dragging them and dropping them here in the beat and bass line editor. So let's just show a basic rock beat, and it'd be one measure. And I'll show you in a, a different day how to add more measures and things. But let's just do the the standard rock beat that everybody knows. Um, so let's let's go ahead and put that on. Let's do eighth notes on the hi hat. Let's just see what that sounds like. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Okay. Um, and then let's do kick on one. And then let's do the snare on three. So we got one, two, three. See how these different the groups are broken up in groups of four? So the first one is the downbeat. It's one, two. Well, this would be one, two, three. So if I hit play now, if I put the snare on one and two, or the kick on one and two, then you get another very common rock beat. So you can basically see how this is um, breaking apart. So you got the hi-hats are on eighth notes and we got the kick on one and two and then the snare on three and that is just go ahead and throw in a, a, a snare and a kick and a hi-hat and play around with it and see what different beats you can come up with and until next time um, have a great day <laughs>